negative contact there. Alright, um, at this time, at 8.45 Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to close the formal portion of the net. And uh, we can go to an informal one if anybody wants to discuss anything. We can uh, go ahead and do that. So at this time, I'm going to turn the repeater back over to normal amateur use. There again, I'm going to take special thanks to Rick, KK4B, for the use of the 143-400, with a PL tone of 162.2. This has been KM4AID. I have been your net controller. I thank you, and I hope everybody has a good evening. Okay, KO4PGD from KK4MA. KO4PGD, go ahead, Mike. I haven't talked to you for a few days, Howard. Just curious. Uh, did you get a care package from Canada? No, no, I haven't got that yet. Um, in fact, he sent me a copy to receive Canadian Postal Service, so I imagine it'll transfer over to our Postal Service. He said it'd only take five to six business days, and I'm probably on, I'm probably on day three, four maybe. Okay, okay, I was just kind of curious. I gave you a shot a little earlier, and uh, it must have been out of pocket. But that's okay. That's okay. Well, uh, when you get it, uh, we'll uh, we'll have to to link them up. Okay? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, yeah, Dave was talking about that, uh, or went to that not in in well, I mean in B no in nine B D. N9 AD. That's Joseph from California got on the instant messenger for NetLogger and asked that we log him in. So I did. And uh, he had to be listening via Echo Link or he's traveling to the area here somewhere and listening locally. But uh, anyway, that's where that, that call sign came from. And uh, yeah, I was. Uh, Curious about the, the hairpin match. Hold a second. The, uh, the two meter Yagi that I have, uh, that I got from Justin, uh, when he gave it to me, he said, you need to put a hairpin on it. So I did. I did. And not knowing what I was doing. Um, so I got coax running to that antenna. I've got about two loops in it. I guess that's my valve. I got an ugly balance. Two loops of coax, and that's connected directly to the antenna. And then the hairpin jumps between the uh, the two legs of the dipole, or the the feed element on that yag. And it's a piece of copper wire. I think I got number ten copper wire. I bent it. I started with a V shape. That didn't work very well, so I put a U shape on. But my U has square corners. My U has square corners, and I had to keep playing with the length. So I got the SWR just perfect, and I left it right there. And, uh, so that's my experience with a hairpin. Yeah. Well, uh, down there where you bent, between the two bends that you put in it, uh, like I said, right there at the halfway point, right <laughs> all the way down that hairpin uh, at the halfway point, that's the point, even if you got a metal boom, uh, it's actually recommended uh, to secure that thing uh, to the boom at that point. Like I say, the, the advantages are it won't affect it won't affect the tuning whatsoever because it can't. That's electrically zero right there. Uh, all things being equal, you know, that grid both both sides have to be equal distance or whatever. But that's zero. But the beauty is now you're at DC ground uh, for both sides of the antenna. So as, uh, as, as a good, that's always a good thing, man. Always a good thing. Well, the next time I bring it down, I'm gonna have to try that and see if it makes a difference in it. I I, I took 
great, went to great lengths to keep that piece of copper from touching the boom, thinking that would create problems for me. So I've actually got it bent away from the boom, not at a 90 degree, but maybe uh, maybe 30 degrees uh, off the boom uh, so that it wouldn't touch. But uh, okay. Yep, sure enough. Uh, now you did the right thing, keeping it away from the boom. It's just at the very, like at the very center, uh, you know, at the very middle, all the way down where those two 90 degree pins are, right in the middle. You could attach that uh, to the boom, and, and it really, in theory, it shouldn't affect the tuning at all. I mean, at all. It should make zero difference. Howard, I wish enough people had a DNA uh, because that that DNA, you know, everybody. I I don't want to I don't want to discourage people from using the SWR bridge, but you got to understand that the SWR man, that's a go no go gauge. That it doesn't it, it it's not the whole story. It, it's not the entire story. It it's it's keeping your transmitter happy, but who knows what your antenna is doing. Chicks, eh? Cast, 